morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church for Sunday, October the 8th. As we begin our service of worship, we acknowledge the land in which we gather on is the traditional territory first of the neutral people, and then the Haudenosaunee and the Anishabi people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaty, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is, within the, and is within the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Let us continue to work towards reconciliation with our siblings, and always remember that our great standard of living is directly related to the Indigenous people's resources and their care for this land. Please stand for our processional hymn, number 423, How Great Thou Art.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family today and in generations to come may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow from you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. The word of the Lord. Be we will say Psalm 65 responsively by the full verse. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion 
To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will not blot them out. Happy are they who do choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your holy temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Lord God, joy marks your presence. Beauty, abundance, and peace are tokens of your work in all creation. Work also in our lives, that by these signs we may see the splendor of your love and praise you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The second reading is from the Corinthians. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they, sh- they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were there not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in the sight of God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I just want to share a different little version of that story with you. So a man pops out from behind a building and jumps right in front of Jesus and says, hey, hi, I'm a leper. Please don't run away. What's the matter with your skin, says Jesus? Well, can't you see? I'm covered in runny sores and crusty scabs. Nobody wants to look at me. My face is horrible. Well, what do you want me to do about it? The man falls to his knees, begging Jesus, you can make me better. I know you can. Please, if you do not heal me, I'm just going to scratch myself to death. Well, Jesus being Jesus reached out to touch the man. The man, startled, pulled himself away and said, please, don't touch me. I don't want you to catch this. Jesus looked at the man and said, I'm not afraid to touch you. He reached down. He took a hold of the man's arms, and he pulled him to his feet. Instantly, the itching stopped. All the sores and scabs were healed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, shouted the man. What can I do to say thank you? Well, you can go to the temple. You can show yourself to the priest, and you can say a prayer to God of thanks. Yes, yes, of course I will. And he turned and ran, started to run to the temple, and Jesus cries out, one more thing. Sure, anything. Don't tell anyone. Of course, not a soul. But as he walked to the temple, since the walk was so long, And he was so happy, he forgot his promise. And the next thing you know, every other leper along the road was looking for the wonderful man with the beautiful healing touch. Just a little different version. It's from the Family Book of Jesus by Calvin Miller. It's a great story of gratitude. And that's what this Gospel is technically about gratitude, how we show it and how we receive it. Now, I'm going to ask a question. I want you to think back a long, 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 long time ago to the first time you heard this story. How did you react when you heard about the nine who didn't come back? For me, I was horrified. I thought, how shameful. Here they are completely healed, not a smidge of their decay left. All their sores are healed, and not one of them turned around to come back and say thank you. Let me reread something. As he entered the village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, go and show yourself to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. 
And then when one of them saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising with a loud voice. We all jumped to conclusions about the nine because they didn't turn back, thinking that they were ungrateful. But were they not just doing what Jesus told them to do? Go and show yourselves to the priests. Not, I've made you clean, go show yourselves to the priests. They weren't clean until they started walking. So why Jesus' question? Were, the te- were not ten cleaned, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? It leads us to believe that the other nine were ungrateful. But I don't think they were ungrateful, and I don't think that's the point of Jesus' question. It's not about being ungrateful, because we really don't know whether or not they were ungrateful or not. I think this story is about observing. When he saw that he was healed, he turned back. Again, the other lepers did what Jesus told them to do. They went to the temple. Can you imagine their surprise, their shock, when they went and went, holy crud, my hands are clean. All we know is that one of them was more observant than the others. He was one who noticed first that he was no longer itching or sore. We do not know for a fact that the other nine didn't eventually come back. Maybe in a few hours, maybe in a few days. We don't know. The story is about being observant and about seeing all our blessings. Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. It is all about gratitude. And I will be the first to say that I am so excited about having turkey and stuffing tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. I love my turkey dinner. However, Thanksgiving, along with Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, All these holidays, I struggle with. And I struggle with them because really, we should be giving gratitude every single day. If you have good parents and a good relationship with them, you should really be telling them all the time that you love them, not just on one Sunday a month or one Sunday a year. We should be sharing our gratitude every single day, not on just these hallmark weekends. I understand the point of these holidays and weekends is to emphasize the importance of everything. But I still question whether or not we are truly demonstrating our gratitude as often as we could. There are definite signs, benefits to showing gratitude. As you know, scientists do studies on everything. And there was a study done on the practice of giving gratitude constantly. The report showed a host of benefits. First, physical. You had less aches and pains. I'm going to start because my hip is killing me. Supposedly, you also have low blood pressure. Psychologically, when you show gratitude, you are more alert, more joyful. You should have more pleasure. Socially, you are more forgiving and outgoing. If anybody ever watch, if you watch any TED Talks, Google Brother David. He is a Benedictine monk. His video is about 17 minutes in length. He basically states that with gratitude, we can be happier. We can be happier. And I believe it to be true. I have a couple friends who encourage me on a regular basis to start a gratitude journal. Because they both have one. And every night before they go to bed, they reflect on their day. And they write what they are grateful for. 
They tell them that it helps keep them focused on the positive and appreciate all the little things in their day-to-day -day life, which I think is a good thing. Now, the one thing I do wish us to be mindful of is that I think there is a difference between being grateful but asking for gratitude or looking for thanks and praise. I will admit, I am guilty of this. There have been times when, yes, I have worked my little butt off and I have been really, really proud of my work. And I would have liked to have been noticed. I would have really liked it if somebody had just said, really good job, Jody, or thank you for doing that. Instead, I heard crickets. Or worse, somebody else took the credit for it. Now this hurts, it does. But then it leads me, what I've come to learn, is I need to ask some questions. Why did I do what I did? Did I do it to get a job done? Yes. Did I do it because the job needed to be done? Yes. Did the job bring me peace and joy? Eh, sometimes. Did I feel good while doing the job? Yes. Was I happy while doing the job? Yes. Did I do it just to please others and get compliments? No. If you ever, ever say yes to that last question, you did it for the wrong reasons. I've said this in regards to volunteering many times. You should volunteer because it brings you joy. You should never do anything. Work, volunteer, help friends and family because you're looking for a pat on the back or a, hey, really good job. If that's why you're doing it, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Think about it. Only one of the nine came back to say thank you to Jesus. That we know of. So do you really think that Jesus was sorry for healing the other nine? Do we think for even a second that Jesus thought to himself, well, that's it, I'm done. I'm never going to heal anybody again. Of course not. That wasn't Jesus' way. He was humble. Jesus did not do what he did for people to say thank you. He did it for joy, for the joy it brought him, for the joy it brought our Lord, and for the love it showed. So his question, where are the other nine? Honestly, I think it's a fair question, but I do not think it's a question of judgment. I believe that Jesus was trying to make a point. Who came back to say thank you? The Samaritan, the person whom the Jewish people considered less than the last person anybody would have expected to come back and say thank you. Jesus was making a point. Do not expect thank yous from the ones you actually expect thank yous from. Rather realize that you are more likely to get a thank you from the unexpected. This Thanksgiving weekend, we are meant to be observant, humble, and grateful. By being observant, we see all our blessings. And we are grateful, and we share all our talents and skills. And we understand that all of that are gifts from God. We share them humbly. We share them with joy and grace. And we share them without needing a pat on the back. Or a thank you. Gratitude. It is a warm feeling of thankfulness towards God and towards the world around us. It allows us to look at the world with open eyes, with great appreciation and love. Thanksgiving 
is a wonderful holiday filled with many, many great things. But let us continue to carry on our love and appreciation well beyond this weekend. Amen. Let us stand together and confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. prayers of the people. As we share in this gathering on this Thanksgiving Sunday, let us rejoice in all our abundances with hearts full of gratitude and reach out to the source of all blessings and the provider of every good thing, saying, be near to us in every need. Gracious God, we lift our voices in thanksgiving for your unfailing love and patient care. You are the shepherd of our souls, leading us through the challenges of life and providing for our every need. As we look back on our journey, we are grateful for the surpassing value of knowing Christ, the one who embodies your grace and truth. Through faith in Christ, 
we find righteousness and hope for the world. In times of trial and uncertainty, your love sustains us, and your promises give us strength. We thank you for your faithfulness throughout generations, guiding your people, the vineyard of the Lord, with your steady hand. Let us call on the Lord. Be near to us in every need. Everlasting God, you want us to be a generous people offering our time, talents, and treasure to your service. Guard us, Lord, from holding back when we should be letting go and honoring you as Lord of all we have. We pray for the work of our Primate Linda, Bishop Susan, Rector Jody, and clergy everywhere that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. We pray for the parish of St. James and St. Brendan that we will be ambassadors for your teachings and live our lives to your glory. We remember today those on our parish list, Jessica Bull, John and Marie Butt, Peter Biscos, Chris and Lynn Carter, Eleanor Sharuk, Colin Chilvers, J.C. Cloutier and Diana Rutherford, their families and loved ones. Let us call on the Lord, be near to us in every need. Loving God, the comforter of the afflicted and hope of the hurting, we lift up people in need of your healing touch and comforting presence. In the face of pain and suffering, we find hope in your promises and the assurance that you are with us. Hear our prayers for the brokenhearted, the sick and the suffering. We lift up those who are burdened with physical ailments, emotional distress, and spiritual uncertainties. On our healing prayer list, we pray for Kelly Bennett, Don Brown, Doug and Mary Cullen, Elizabeth Ebert, Eleanor Kendall, Jackie Roy, Pam Simons, Doug Stewart, Cheryl Wakefield, Angela, Emily, Glenn, Chris, Slater, Michael, Maria, Ernie, Stephen, Betsy Perez, Catherine, Margaret, and Lindsay Shura. May they experience the hope and restoration that comes from knowing you. We pray for the lonely and the oppressed and the marginalized, that they may find solace in your love and find justice and equity in our society. May your church be a beacon of hope, reaching out to those in need with compassion and support. Let us call on the Lord. Be near to us in every need. Holy One, you are our comfort and strength in times of sudden disaster, crisis, and chaos. Surround those now with your grace and peace who are suffering through storms, earthquake, fire, flood, or any other terrible disaster. By your spirit, lift up those who have been affected. Sustain those who work to rescue or rebuild and fill them with the hope of your new creation. Through you, our rock and our redeemer. Let us call on the Lord. Be near to us in every need. For those who have passed from this life, that they celebrate the Lord's greatness in the gift of salvation, and that those who grieve for them are comforted in the strength and warmth of your loving embrace. Let us call on the Lord. Be near to us in every need. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the reason for our thanksgiving, we offer our praise. May our hearts overflow with gratitude and may our lives bear the fruits of gratitude, love, and kindness. In your grace, Lord, be near us in every need. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Let's share each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you at home. Peace Peace be with you. Let us pray. Source of all life, the heaven and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. We receive the symbol of our labor and love which we offer you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your own image, your children, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. 
you made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah, gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage to freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints, we who have served you in every age, give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick, and he ate and drank with the outcasts and the singers. He opened the eyes of the blind to proclaim the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night, he freely gave himself to death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroyed the power of sin and death. By rising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Recalling his death and proclaiming his resurrection and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon, these, upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join us at the Lord's table.
Let us pray. God of our hope in this Eucharist, we find the source of all your blessings. Nourish us in these holy mysteries. May we, with our lives, give you continual thanks and praise. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Please be seated for just a few announcements. See, that was supposed to be on the 8.30. <laughs> Just a couple of announcements. Um, first and foremost, I don't know if you've paid attention to the news, but I would like you to add in your prayers um, the people of Israel and the people of Gaza. Um, they are under war. Um, a surprise attack happened on Israel two days ago. Uh, last I heard on the news between the two countries already, they've already calculated about 400 people dead, um, soldiers and civilians. Um, so uh, yes, please just keep both countries in your prayers. Um, I did not announce October's book last week, only because I didn't have it. Um, it arrived, of course, on Monday. Um, for the month of October, the book I'm throwing out there might be a little, the title might be controversial, but it's a good book. Um, it's by Sarah Bessie who is an amazing, amazing lady, amazing author. We had the privilege of having her come to our clergy day, and she spoke. Um, the book is An Invitation to Revisit to the Bible's View of Women. The title, Jesus Feminist. It's a great book, I swear. It's a good book. It's a good book. Don't let the title scare you. Um, and last but not least, the Christmas house tour. I've had so many people come up and go, how much are the tickets, how much are the tickets, how much are the tickets? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the committee and I are meeting on Thursday. Uh, I, I, I believe we are going to make a decision on Thursday. Um, so tickets will be ready to be sold for next Wednesday. So right now it's just save the date for the Christmas house tour. Um, I am overwhelmed, I have to be honest, I'm really overwhelmed by the excitement of the Christmas house tour. Last, this past Thursday, I went over to the learning cafe that happens the first Thursday of every month at Sandy Meyer House on our behalf, and there was about 70 people in that hall. Only 10 probably belonged to us. And when I announced that the Christmas house tour was coming back, there was great joy. There was great joy, and that, that was part of how much does it cost, how much, I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I'm overwhelmed, and I know it's going to be a good tour, so um, hopefully tickets will be on sale next week. Please stand for our recessional hymn, number 399. <laughs>
Our service has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope you have lots and lots of turkey and have a good family time.